last round. Logan playing Obzon Company. As Ross, usual. Ross playing Burn and uh, Kitchen Finks was <laughs> that dastardly Finks <laughs> got Ross again. Ross's deck choice, you know, he's playing Burn as well as you did mention. I was surprised by that. That was one of the bigger surprises of the weekend for me. A lot of Burn in the room. Yeah. And, you know, there's Ross. There's Morawski. Lissette. You can lump Tom Ross into that camp as well. Trying to get beatdowns. A lot of Atarkas commands. Heck of a card. Caleb Scherer, Jonathan Morawski getting ready here for game number one. It's Burn. It's Affinity. It'll be quick. So, for our backup match, be ready. Caleb on the play. Glimmer Void is where he's going to start. He'll go to a Vault Scourge. And there's Norathop. There's a follow-up play, and now Memnite, and now pass the turn back. The gang's all here. It sure is. <laughs> they can use a little help, a little buffing, but they are all here. Four permanents on turn one. Morowski with a stomp ground untapped, and now there's a Wild Coddle. So he'll fall down to 18. We're going to head back Caleb's way. Pick up a copy of Darkstell Citadel. Glimmer Void's here to stay. Vault Scourge into the red zone. Caleb up to 19, Jonathan down to 17, and there is a Citadel. What's the turn two play? It's a doozy there, Narcbottom Raptor. That's a big one to have. A little bit surprised to see Caleb not just shove everything onto the Vault Scourge. I don't know if there's a way for Murawski to beat a Vault Scourge that large early on in the game. No copies of Path to Exile on his list. I suppose at that point you're liable to Atarka's Command, because Atarka's Command can give your creatures reach, so there could be a gang block. Well, I, I think that plays a little risky, right? If if, Mar if Marossi just goes another red source, double bolt your Vault Scourge. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's a, you know, there's, a, there's definitely a risk to running that play. But a good shot that you would have seen Lightning Bolt on the first turn on the draw rather than the Wild Nakatl. Potentially. But his draw is good enough. I think he also has an Etch Champion here that he doesn't need to go for broke. Yeah, he can shove onto that thing, and then life gets really easy. I just found from the burn side of the table that the more that the affinity deck is inclined to just shove, go for aggressive lines of play, you, you rarely have that many outs. But the fact that a Tarkus command is in the equation, it can give your team reach and block something. Uh, Caleb's just probably better served playing it a bit more conservatively. Morowski with a Sacred Foundry off the Wooded Foothills. He's already down to 14. Let's see what the foul play is going to be here. His Nakato is a 3-3. But he's already under the gun. This is one of the better starts from Affinity. Doesn't involve Mox Opal, but he's got just about everything else. Yep, and a good follow-up next turn potentially, and that's champion. And uh, this kind of draw, very hard to handle because it's not like Morowski is flush with creature removal game one. He'll suspend a Rift Bolt and simply pass the turn back over to Caleb. Sheer, looking like he wants to attack for one, and he will. So Vault Scourge is going to come across in the red zone. And it looks like that may work out just fine. Ross going to consult his hand. The follow-up here is a cranial plating. Now, these are the real hits. This is affinity at work here. The, the biggest issue is once Arcbound Ravager is on the battlefield, it's it, almost impossible to manage the game via removal. It just requires too many cards and too much mana over too many turns to be able to handle it this way. And if that cranial plating gets onto the Vault Scourge, uh, damage racing is off the table as well. Rift Bolt, that's going to go after Arcbound Ravager. You have to get that off the battlefield first. Yes. And then everything else. Because it causes so many headaches. And what I like about this play from Morowski is it puts Caleb to a test. Morowski got a bunch of mana untapped, and he's saying, okay, I'm going to go after Arcbound Ravager. What do you want to do? Do you want to sacrifice a bunch of stuff to save it? Do you want to let it go? I can interact with you now. I think if it was not for the Etch Champion in Shearer's hand, he may move the Ravager up to a 4-4, but because he doesn't want to sack the Darkseal Citadel, I think he's just going to play it safe. And the champ is such a great card in the matchup. Especially with Cranial Plate, there's just no interaction in game one. Yeah. Arpon Ravager does bite the dust. The modular trigger will go over to Ornithopter, and that's why it's got a counter on it. It's a 1-3 now. But with the Ravager off the table, there's an opening here for Morowski to be able to handle this game with bolts. Even if he has something like Grim Lava Mancer, assuming Shearer doesn't get to the Edge Champion, th this game is still manageable, as bad as the opening was here for Morowski with Caleb on the play and the curve that he had. Well, here comes Wild McConnell. Shearer going to take three. There's a Scalding Tarn. 
There's a lava spike. Put you down to 14. Morowski catching up. And now we're going to go Caleb's way. A spring leaf drum the draw. It's a delayed mana. Not good for Edge Champion just yet. Signal Pest is where Caleb will start. And now there's a Springleaf Drum. And now it's time to see where the plating's going to go. If I'm Caleb, I I'm not feeling as though it on Vault Scourge is good to go. I like equipping the Ornithopter. Yeah, this is a good way to split the difference. Uh, I mean, it's still very likely that Murawski, if he can kill something, will kill the thing with the plating on it. But at least Shearer's not putting all the eggs in the Vault Scourge basket. It's plus eight via cranial plating. Excuse me, plus seven. Too much for Murawski to comfortably take a hit from. Yeah. If he can't interact, you have to imagine he certainly will try. And you can wear down removal-based decks like Burn in sequences like this, where you just say, plating on the next thing, plating on the next thing, plating on the next thing. You have to have a removal spell for all of it. Well, you just can't afford to take a, you can't afford to take a punch for eight. Yeah, it's just too much. There's Lightning Bolt. Ornithopter down. Vault Scourge in for one. And back over to Morales, we're going to go. We have an update already, which that mm. was, boy, that was fast. Mm. Was it Burn, burn Mirror? No. Jolisette won over Todd Anderson two games to zero. That was, that was cool. Jolisette playing Burn and Todd Anderson on Team Retour Twin. Twin, yes. And Joe not messing around. There's a stomping ground into the battlefield tapped. We'll go back over to Shear. You see, the life total is 12 to 12 here as Caleb will take a draw. I think that Shear should have considered a chump block there with the Mem Knight. Yeah? With Etch Champion plus Cranial Plating, he's going to win the race in two turns, almost certainly. But that three points of damage he takes right there could make the difference between Murawski being able to burn out inside of those two turns and not. And I don't know if the Mem Knight is worth much more than a chump block at this point. Shear thinking Vault Scourge should wear the Cranial Plating now. Especially because when you play the Etch Champion this turn, you have a blocker for the Nakadal. That's the last turn that card can connect. Here comes the Vault Scourge. And now there's an Atarkas Command. So it'll be Skullcrack mode there, but Morassi's going to take a huge hit still. And now the champ is here. Not a lot Morowski can do about that. He's got three. He's got a window here for three lava spikes. Well, can he do it? The answer is no as he picks up his permanence. Caleb Shearer going to win again number one here over Jonathan Morowski. Affinity very quickly up a game here over Burn. But now we go to the sideboard where Morowski is packing a lot more for this matchup than you see in most Burn sideboards. You see the goods here in Estonia Silence. Three copies of Deflecting Palm, three Destructive Revelry, a Gut Shot, three Path to Exile, two Rending Volley, and two Molten Rain. There are so many options here. I'll let you run them all down. The three copies of Path to Exile, the Gut Shot, the Destructive Revelry, and the Stony Silence, all very, very good. Deflecting Palm has moments of being great. If someone goes for the kill by shoving all the Ravager counters onto something or cranial plating on a thing without the ability to move it or sacrifice the creature, there's windows for that card to be powerful. In my experience, it has not been consistent. I don't like bringing it in here, but I wouldn't rule it out because it does have a very high ceiling. I think the floor is just very low, and usually in my experience, I've, I've hit the floor and not the ceiling. For Caleb, he's got another copy of Etch Champion, two Hangerback Walker, a Spell Sky, two copies of Gear Pow Aether Grid, two Ancient Grudge, a Dismember, a Slaughter Pact, a Thought Cast, a Timely Reinforcements, okay. Hater! A, a Whip Flare and two Ghost Quarters. There's a lot of options here for sure. I think the two copies of Hangerback Walker, the Spellskite, and the Edge Champion are just cards that are very well set up for a matchup when he's brawling with two threes and three threes on the ground. So I think those cards are going to be coming in for sure, as is the one copy of Timely Reinforcements. There's a couple of fringe cards here. The one copy of Whip Flare 
isn't really great against most of these builds, in my opinion, because they are so heavy on three toughness. But there's enough two toughness, and Grim Lava Mancer is a problematic enough card that I think the Whip Flare is fine. And you can go after the mana in these decks with Ghost Quarter pretty aggressively. Also, uh, there's two, excuse me, two basic mountains in Murawski's list, so it does get a little bit worse, but it's hard for this deck to consistently have Naya mana in play if you're attacking the mana with Ghost Quarter, so that's an option for Sheer as well. Well, you do see the options there for both players, some interesting ones to be sure. Jonathan Morales is going to be on the play. Obviously, play is a huge role in this type of matchup. Yes, it, it's a very fast matchup. I think Morawski there on the play has a reasonable shot of winning that game, but on the draw, Shear's opening was just a little too explosive. Well, they'll shuffle up for game number two, and in the meantime, we're going to talk about the StarCityGames.com holiday sale that is taking place right now. We've had different specials all month long. Right now, it's up to 50% off of select promos until Monday. So the website gets updated throughout the month, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So make sure to be heading back to the website every single day. Right now, 50% off selected promos. I actually went through the sale the other day, which is great because you get to check out the deals. Also, there's just so many hilarious promos that got made for who knows what reason. <laughs> so you just get a, a walk down memory lane as well. On top of the sales that get updated throughout the week, we have stocking stuffers all month long, things like deck boxes, sleeves, dice bags, extended art lands, and so forth. So make sure to check back to the website every day. Check out the new deals. Game number two about to be underway here between Jonathan Morawski and Caleb Shear. So you see on that screen there, you got, you know, the foil, alternate Ugin, you got a Judge Foil, Windswept Heath, you got some of the hits. But if you go to the website, you get to check out the misses as well. Oh, are there any misses on the tip of your tongue? Uh, there's the there's the centaur, the arena centaur or the book promo centaur from the mid nineties. It's RR122 Vigilance. The end. <laughs> that card's on sale. It's on sale right now. I think it's like two bucks, <laughs> regularly three bucks. There's a lot of stuff going on like that. So and go browsing. Yeah, take I, a look. I was downstairs in the hotel lobby hanging out with some of the players yesterday, playing a league and laughing, going through the stuff on sale. Hey, there there are some interesting promos in Magic Wind Seeker Centaur? Is that the name of the card? Wind Seeker Centaur? I, I, my Centaur library is it's a lot of It's something where you had to mail in like the the... UPC code on the back of a book in oh. 94, and six to eight weeks later, they would mail you a 2-2 two -two Vigilance for three, which I guess was kind of exciting for the time. Did it have flanking at least? No, just 2-2 two -two Vigilance. Well, well, story checks out. I've been tweeted at, and, and, and there it is. Bang! Uh, it, on sale! <laughs> attacking does not cause Windseeker Centaur to tap. Two bu I don't know. I don't want to quote the price. I could it, be. I could be wrong. Some of those things are randomly expensive for. Oh, Sewers of Estark, that's on sale right now. I uh, I don't know what that card is either. I think it's four mana, and you get to mess up a block. This was another card that you had to like mail in something or go to Dragon Con one year <laughs> or whatever. I'm telling you, it, if you want a good laugh, obviously enjoy the coverage today. Check this all out afterwards. Go check out the sale. Minus Harry Swift, we're off a basic Mountaineer from Rowski. Going to bring Caleb down to 19. We're all tied up as he'll start off with an Eighth Nexus. That is a Springleaf Drum. Is there a free creature? No, just a Mox Opal. There is a free creature in Mem Knight. This is what makes Affinity such a scary deck to play against. This kind of explosive start. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Turn one, Arcbound Ravager. Post-board, Murawski plays a bit better against this card because he has Path to Exile. Yeah. That, that's a way to at least force the issue for one card. And, you know, Revelry as well. Not so bad. Got some options here. The big question is, how does he want to sideboard in the matchup? Because you know, I imagine cards like a Tarkus Man are probably gone. No, I, I think that, my experience, I, I don't know exactly what Murawski's done. The worst cards in his list, four copies of Eidolon and the Great Revel, those have got to go. Because you kind of take a controlling position in the matchup to some extent. And... Affinity dumps out its hands so fast that they play the Eidolon game a little bit better than you do. The one copy of Mutagenic Growth is not doing that much work. I actually like a Tarkus Command in the matchup because reach is a keyword that matters because of Cranial Plating and all the flyers. I, I would cut Boros Charms before I cut the copies of a Tarkus Command. Goblin Guide's going to come on down. Vault Scourge is the reveal from the trigger. And Morowski, he's not afraid. He's going to get in here with both creatures. Another side benefit of cutting the Boros Charms and leaving in a Tarkus Command is because you're bringing in Destructive Revelry as well, you become a little bit white, lighter on your white requirements, and it puts you under pressure to fetch an untapped Sacred Foundry less frequently. Here's a Lava Spike post-combat. Caleb down to 13. And we're going to head his way. He'll draw a card. Picked up a copy of Blink Moth Nexus. See what else he's got going on in the grip. There's the Nexus. You know, he's got a Vault Scourge. Looks like he might have a plating as well. Well, the concern here, if you're sure, is he has no source of life gain. So 
He's at risk of getting Lava Spiked out of this game. Morosky's not going to be able to contain the board for very long, given Shear's opening. But the Lava Spikes are good here. Well, there's another cranial plate. No, there's the first cranial plate, excuse me. I believe he has another copy in his hand. Now it looks like it's going to be a hard cast Volt Scourge. No Phyrexian mana necessary. And now, Archbound Ravager might be feeling it. Well, it's a slightly risky attack here because I don't think Shearer wants to commit the Vault Scourge as a chump blocker on the way back. And I don't know if Shearer wants to risk Murawski going untap, attack you. It's possible Murawski can, in fact, burn him out from that spot. Looks like Caleb will send in with the Archbound Ravager. Morowski, no blocks to make, of course. So he'll just take a point of damage. Is this attack too risky? Time to find out. Morowski will draw his card. And he's got a lot of thinking to do on his third turn of the game. So 13 makes it a little bit rough. Because if he has two Lava Spikes or Searing Blaze type effects and can connect, I believe he's a point short. Three on the table, two prowess triggers is five, plus six points of damage, and this theoretical is six. So he needs a pretty specific hand to be able to kill from this spot. But it's not impossible. Sacred found the untapped. Ooh, Searing Blaze is a delight. Now remember, Searing Blaze has two targets. Mm -hmm. So even if Caleb does sacrifice this Vault Scourge, to Searing Blaze. The three damage is still going to be dealt, but you get your plus one, plus one counter. You also get a Prowess Trigger. And Morowski might also just feel, uh, I don't think that Shear's going to be able to kill me on the way back. That's fair. Glimmer Void is the reveal. That's going to go to Caleb's hand from Goblin Guide. Remember that Ravager and Cranial Plating, they draw from the same well. Mm -hmm. So even though they're both very powerful in the deck, in concert with one another, it's not really increasing Caleb's clock. Caleb with another copy of Cranial Plating in hand to go along with the Glimmer Void and a freshly drawn Dark Steel Citadel. And that was my concern last turn with the Ravager attack. I think if Shearer had something like Searing Blaze on the radar, he would have preferred to just hang back with the Ravager, maybe trade with the Goblin Guide, move the counter somewhere, play a slightly slower game. But now he's at the mercy of the top of Murawski's deck. I don't think he can kill him this turn. And there's a very good shot that Murawski kills him on the way back, even if he doesn't connect in combat. Another plating. Might just be all in. I mean, the best route to try to kill this turn is to get the Inkboth Nexus up to 10. That's his best shot of being able to get lethal, because if he does, tries to do it through natural damage, he has to come up with 14, essentially. Through the Nexus, he only needs to come up with 10. Well, getting to 14 is not particularly hard right now when you have two platings. Regular damage is pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, he's he's in trouble. With the second plating, he's, he's good here. Uh, path to exile is the risk. Yeah. He's dead on the way back to that. Yep. But. He's going to equip. And I, th I just want to put it all on one Ravager from Caleb here. I don't think you want to split the difference in this situation. I don't think there's a way to productively split. Yeah. So I, I think you just have to shove on the Ravager, hope that Morowski's hand is just bolts, and uh, that you can just kill this turn. In we go. Is there a path? There is not. And Caleb Shearer is going to win this match here over Jonathan Morawski. Two games to zero. Affinity going to take care of Burn. And for Caleb, he picked up a loss the last round, but he gets a win here this round. And remember, these two players, well, they're into day number two. They're just battling it out for buys. And now they're both one and one. Some gutsy attacks there from Shearer. Um, and Morawski's sideboard didn't really come out to play in that matchup. You didn't see the Stony Silence, the Revelries, the Path to Exiles, uh, the cards that I think he really needed to tilt the matchup around. He just couldn't find. And uh, assuming that Morawski doesn't have something powerful like that and doesn't have the most explosive star starts, Affinity is usually going to win that matchup. So I suppose the question there is if Morawski.